right time. So where are we headed? Uh, around? Yeah, just around. Yeah. We'll, we'll hit the coast, I guess. Head out towards Provincetown. Sounds good to me. Scoot around Provincetown. Come on on back in, I guess. There we go. Alright. You know, I can get real lazy here. Yeah. You know, put the flight director on. Do it. I want to see it. Alright. Yeah. Now that's in the oil pilot sign on, just the flight director. Oh, uh, I can hit nav, it'll just fly it for me, without having to worry about the wind correction. Um, I can set my vertical speed for altitude here. And if I can get my hand on it, put it, it is a little bumpy today. 500 feet per minute, nice leisurely climb. Got that set. Then do that. But oh, she's doing all the work right now. Yeah, I'm not really doing anything now. That's no. But that's kind of the way the plane's designed. Yeah. Like, it's like a series, you know, it's not designed to be hand-flown for an extended period of time. And without mentioning the price, you told me the other day, this is significantly less than a series. Well used. Yeah. Used, yeah. yeah. I mean, you can get... Uh, Actually, I think but barely used though. This Cirrus uh, actually hurts all their previous customers with their. Uh, it really hurts their resale value because yeah. they keep coming out with new and improved versions. Yeah, the audio seems to be happier now. It, it may have actually just been hot. Yeah, pro tip for any other YouTube videos out there: don't put your equipment in the window. Yeah. Or your keys if you're a flight school. Like you get, you go grab the keys and you'll burn yourself. You get a, you oh get yes. the key print right there. All right, so I've just put it back on now, so we're gonna get back on course out to Provincetown. I love all the elements of this airplane that are still uniquely Piper. Like I don't think they've changed the mold that makes their trim wheels or their yeah. throttle quadrant. Yeah, I know, fifty it's years. Incredible, huh? Hey, it's great That's for somebody like you who loves Piper. Yeah. All right, so. So we burned almost six gallons in the climb Oof. to 5,500. So that's what I mean, you need to stay on top of your uh, leaning, otherwise you'll burn through all your fuel pretty quick. Watching this TIT here, 1750 is max. I don't think I'm going to make it any more lean than that, it's about 19 gallons an hour. And the nice thing is with the turbocharged plane, it's a fuel burn basically stays the same now. Yeah. It doesn't it doesn't change. The only thing it changes is you climb altitude, you just get more true airspeed out of it for the same amount of fuel. So seventy percent seventy percent power is usually what I'm flying at. Well, did you wanna try flying the plane just to get a feel for it? Yeah, yeah, I would. Yeah. I think it's still gonna hang out of this, but I'm good. So do you disengage? Yeah, I'll disengage. disengage. You just tell me when you're ready. Yeah. Take over. Ready. You ready? Here yeah. we go. It really wants you to know. <laughs> it's your plane. Mega 198, Boston Center. Good afternoon. Climb and maintain flight level 220. 220, Mega 198. Yeah, absolutely as smooth as all these turbocharged big airplanes up here. Cushing Cape Approach, 133.75. G'day. One two three seven five. Good day. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, I get. Uh, Profit approach one two three point six seven. Plane, you you can get used to it. You get comfortable flying long distance in it. You know. Yeah. How long did you say it takes you to get to Venice, Florida? Six hours. That's not bad. Four forty four. Cape approach. Cape Austin. Takes me six hours. I actually. I, I usually take a break. I go three and a half, and then two and a half. I have a full day of flying today, and my father is actually going to Florida and back in one day. But we're going to see who ends up being in the air longer today. Yeah, anything you want to say? Anything you want to tell people about the airplane or what you do with it or anything? All right, yeah, my name is Steve uh, Saracino. I'm uh, based in uh, Mansfield, Mass, 1 Bravo Niner. And uh, we're flying my uh, Piper Malibu Matrix today. And uh, I just got this plane in April, um, mainly to get back and forth from Massachusetts to uh, Venice, Florida. Uh, previously, I had a Mooney ovation with the uh, 310 horsepower 
uh, STC. That was a, it's a great plane, very powerful, uh, very responsive. But for long trips uh, with the family, it's a little on the cramp side. So once you're in it in the cockpit, it, it, it's not that bad. But uh, I was looking for a little bit more room, um, even for myself. I like the white cabin on this. Yeah. It's roomy. It's got um, cup holders. It's got cup holders. Um, it's still, I had to get a plane that still got the same amount of speed at least. I didn't want to go any slower. I tried that once in my life. I went from a, a Mooney Ovation to an Archer. And uh, found it wasn't really working for me. So went back to a Mooney. Um, if you're only flying to the Cape, you don't need anything more than an Archer actually. But. I just tended to go long distances and the winds were killing me. Yeah. So, uh, this is twin turbo charge, 350 horsepower. And it has the built in oxygen, so I can go high if I want to. You can cruise anywhere you want. I have family in White Plains and uh, Long Island, New York, which I go to Republic mostly. So I don't need oxygen for those trips. And it was, it was more of an expense insurance wise and uh, possibly maintenance to get a pressurized version. Yeah. Um, you lose some useful load because they took all the mechanicals involved in the pressurization system out of the oh out of the Malibu. That's nice. So it made everything lighter, so you gain some useful load. And for me, it was more about useful load. I don't mind the cannulas; it doesn't really bother me. Um, I have pulse oximeter on the plane. Obviously, that's I think critical to have. I don't think you can fly at altitudes without it. Yeah. So I, I use that and take long trips. Um, yeah. Right now I'm kind of scheduled that to fly out to Reno oh, yeah. for the air races with the plane. Oh, that should be tons of fun. So I don't know if I'm going to make it. You know, it depends on the weather. It, it's already, you know, there's snowstorms out there already. Really? Yeah, uh. in the mountains. So if not, I may divert and then... Uh, Hit some uh, airports in Colorado. Those high it altitudes. Just flying yeah. Over there, yeah. I always wanted to fly into Aspen. Yeah. Tally ride. Um, uh, I've flown into Sedona. Or Sedonia. I don't know how they say but I say Sedona. And uh, that's interesting because you're landing right on a Mesa. Yeah. And that's cool. I've flown... Uh, all over the west, really, with the Mooney ride. So this will be my first westbound trip with this plane. And I'm kind of wondering what altitudes I'm going to use. Because the plane likes to fly high, but going westbound, it's headwinds. So it may not be worth it. It may be better to be at 12,500 with the plane than to climb to 17,500 or 21, flight level 210. Um, that's what I remember. I'll have, to, I'll have to figure it out on the way, which is going to be best for me, but I'm hoping on the way back oh, I should be able to go high light and speed. catch some tailwinds and really move along. So It's always great to hear those kind of long-distance fun aviation adventures because people are kind of saying that I'm going to grow out of the Warrior and go into something bigger and take on some of those adventures myself. And we're switching tanks. We, you don't want to have more than a 10-gallon fuel imbalance. Uh, I don't know if it shows up in the video, but the wings are pretty long. Yeah. And the fuel sloshes around, I gather. So you don't want to have a high level of imbalance. So we burned 11. I should have done it a little sooner, but... It's got an indicator I saw there. Come on. Only like a, a minute um, or two ago. Yeah, it kind of warned you that's coming up, and... This always tells you if you have the system off, doesn't mean it's broken because if I yeah. put it on, it works. But it's a warning. So we can. Uh so, what did you want to do after this? Just follow kind of to the south to go around the delta, or do you want to go back up 
And go back over Providence. Uh, or Providence Town. You can just you can just run along the coast here. Take yeah. the scenic route. Yeah, I don't know where the Hyannis Bravo starts, but I guess we'll see it. Uh, we'll start looking well, for those uh, dash yeah, blue lines. Uh, Delta, Hyannis Delta, right? Yeah. Yeah. And you're well above it, so you know. Oh, you know what? True. I don't have to worry about that. I'm not used to that. I like it. I mean, we technically, we're supposed to go down to 4,500. Oh, we can go up. But, uh, why don't you go up? Can do. The autopilot is off, so you just have to do it yourself and use the trim wheel when we get to 6,500. Yeah, it's definitely heavy on the controls. Oh, yeah, it's like a truck. Yeah. You wouldn't have to go to the gym after flying this plane. No. Very heavy. Yeah, it's very heavy. I mean, even the difference between the Warrior and the Piper Arrow, because that's kind of my, my biggest plane that I've really been able to manhandle, even that difference, they have counterweights on, or I guess not counterweights, but just extra weight on the surfaces, so that way it reduces the flutter. And even just that, at the higher airspeed, is quite a muscle. And I really am kind of thinking about what my next airplane is going to be. Uh, you know, un unfortunately for me, the driving factor is the cost, so oh, yeah. i got to figure out probably something not quite this big, but it's fun. And it kind of gives me a preview of something I might hope to achieve in a couple of years. But if you're just a, actually, you know what, this is one of those great opportunities when I can ask people on the channel what they think. If you guys have an airplane that you think I should go for after the Warrior, if I want to be going to Bahamas a lot from like southern Florida or going down to the Keys, let me know what you think it should be. I kind of have one in mind, but I'd be curious to see what you guys think is a good step up from the Warrior keeping cost in mind. I'd love to get like an extra 100 or 200 pounds useful load. The speed doesn't matter to me too much. It would be nice if I was faster, but keep the cost down and get an extra couple hundred pounds would be fantastic. It's kind of like a reality TV show, because what you guys say will happen on the channel. Right. But this is, you know, we talk about this plane, the, the Malibus and the TPMs a lot, so this is kind of where I'd like to think that we're headed eventually. Yeah. Well, if you got to carry people, that's what you... You really don't have that many options if you want to carry people. Yeah, I find sometimes it's easier to tweak it. Yeah, I got right. my hands on my broken audio right. control. Right, I got, I got, I got, yeah, yeah. That was one thing I didn't like about the Cirrus. Yeah? No manual trim. Oh, really? I can't say as I yeah, noticed I that. Anyway, I've only flown one briefly. And uh, that concerned me. Yeah, well that's why I like having the manual flaps in my Warrior versus no, the yeah. Cessna. One, one, zero. Thank you, sir. Really. you know, you don't really need flaps, but... Especially if you're going to have a real emergency and need to land in a field, I'd still want them. Oh, speaking land about as short as possible. Yeah, speaking about things you really don't need, this does come with speed brakes. Oh yeah? Yeah. So they're, they're, are they yeah, installed? Yeah, so if you want to get an idea of what it does, we can put it out. Just to... You ready? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> That's considerable. Look at what it does to that airflow, too. Look at the flaps flying around. Yeah. Wow. What kind of a sink rate can you get with that? Oh, you... You know, if you pull your, if you nose down, I mean, you go down 2,000 easily with, you know, with that in there. I'm trying to see where the control is. It's right here oh, on the yoke. Oh, yoke. Neat. I haven't really needed it yet with this plane. Add him with the Mooney, actually. Yeah. You kind of need him with the Mooney. It was very slippery. It really helped when you got into the pad. Uh, and it reduced the float on the landing. Oh, yeah. This doesn't float like a Mooney. So... I haven't had any issues uh, with this plane with floating, really. But it comes, it supposedly comes in handy in mountainous terrain, which I could see, like, I've flown to uh, Vegas and you come over the mountains and all of a sudden you start, you gotta get down. Yeah. And, you know, you put the speed brakes out, you can generate a lot of, uh, 
downward feed per minute without gaining a lot of speed. These are some places in western Massachusetts that that would come in handy, I bet, if you're coming at this kind of speed. It's a plane. There's always something broken and or ready to break. That's yeah. absolutely true. Uh, you know, the, when people say that they don't see any reason to go skydiving because they don't want to jump out of a perfectly good airplane, have you heard the mechanics retort to that? No. Uh, no such thing as a perfectly good airplane. Oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah that makes sense, yeah. Do you want to tell your story about what happened in the... Um, uh, the Bonanza with your friend the other day? You were talking about at night? And why I said, like, oh, 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 oh. flying at night? Oh, <laughs> there's Jet Blue <laughs> yeah. up there. Actually, it w we was, wasn't in the Bonanza at the time. Oh. We were in a, a Cherokee uh, 140, a flight liner. Yep, one of the original guys. Well, it was just as simple as uh, we'd come back from Block Island, and we were just getting past Providence airspace, heading back to Mansfield, and for a split second, literally, there was silence. It's like the engine seized for a split second and then started right up again. And... So weird. It happened so fast, you think you imagined it. But that's when I turned to her, I said, did you notice that? And, you know, because we actually turned and looked at each other right, right away. We both noticed it. And, uh... Depart Depot heading, uh, it one just zero, kind of, at that point, we were like at 5,500 feet zero still, because we were over there airspace, and it's like, please do not descend <laughs> until we get over the airport. Yeah, that's because what I like, like to can't, do at night. Can't, can't afford to lose any altitude if uh, something happens, you know? So we flew to 5,500 feet, right, you know, over the airport, and then we, we came down when we got to the airport, but I, over the years, I don't know what it is, I, I've cut back on night flying because I just look out the window and don't see many options, and I used to fly at night all the time, and I love flying at night, um, I'd even go after work and fly to Florida, yeah, wish I could get on that light, um, I used to be in St. Augustine, and with the Mooney, it was a non-stop flight of five hours, wow, yeah, um, that, that thing is fast, I was reading so about it the other day, I would go after, and I'd get, you know, be flying at night, and, uh, it just doesn't appeal to me anymore, from, you know, from a safety standpoint, uh, I do it because I need to stay current at night. Occasionally, I have family in Long Island, so I go to family occasions. I can't say, well, you know, I I got to leave. It's winter time, you know. The sun sets yeah, yeah. at 4:30, and I got to go. I I stay. I did have an incident at Republic at night a couple of years ago. I kind of forgot about that, where uh, I took off into the the abyss, headed towards Long Island Sound. And I got off at Republic, and it was pitched up, and it's pitch black, can't see anything, and the whole plane started vibrating like crazy. After takeoff. After takeoff. That's not a good sign. And I immediately called the tower and told I needed to return. And turned out a mag blue. Yep. And I made it back to, you know... Of course, I told the talent because they said declaring an emergency. Well, I wasn't really. I, said, I just need to get down on the ground ASAP. Because I pulled the power back and nosed it down, and the vibration started dissipating. And I wound up landing and uh, taxi back to the ramp and kind of figured out it was the mag. Now, I did a, when I did my run up, everything was fine. And I took off. And shortly after takeoff. Now, I had a lot of people tell me, why didn't you just fly home? Because you knew it was a mag and you have dual mags. Yeah. And to that I said, I have no idea why the mag failed. At any moment, the other mag might fail. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. So I wasn't home. going to fly across Long Island Sound at night. No kidding. With my family in the back of the plane. Yeah. So, Negative, that was for but people 13, actually did try to make me feel like I was uh, 
Apparently not on frequency. So, uh, I guess it begins with a P. <laughs> yeah, that really, that really irritates me. So, were the other pilots that were saying that, or? Yes. Oh. Oh yeah. That's awful. Yeah. Other pilots. You know. I had a vacuum failure and another plane that had dual vacuum systems. Uh, and right on cue, within a hundred hours, <laughs> the second one failed. I replaced the bad one. Yep. And they both failed within a hundred hours of each other. So, at, at least a vacuum failure is not as bad. I mean, you lose your primary instruments, but. Well, if you're an IMC, it's well, bad. Yeah, fair. Yeah. But the mags are nothing you want to mess with. So, I was, you know, I was a little shocked at how some people felt like I was yeah. being overly cautious. But, oh, well, that's damn people like, that's why you have dual mags, you know? You could have just flown at home on the other mag. The, the dual mags served their purpose in your flight. They got you back on the ground. Yeah, that, that's kind of the way I was looking at it. Yeah. But... You know how it is. There's a lot of... It takes all types. A lot of tall, say. tall tales. I'm not into those kind of adventures. Last item is the fuel pump, so everything is looks set. And Cherokee New England 6 is entering downwind, one zero block. Here's down, the flaps to go. I'll put these in until uh, a little closer. Yeah, Sarah, you got the Sirius in sight? You got the Sirius in sight. What are you doing? Yeah, that last notch adds a lot of drag. Nice approach. Quebec, are you all set? Caution, under feed. I'm uh, still running up here. All right, let's clean this up a little bit. And a beautiful landing too. I was all prepared for that real airliner bounce, like you said, but no. Usually that wasn't smooth as it could have been. Actually, thought I was uh, gonna a little bit more down the runway. 